host, USA Today bestselling author, Olivia Gaines, and I'm here with my pals from the Augusta Richmond County Public Library uh, to talk about uh, Good Omens. Ladies, introduce yourselves. Good morning. I'm Carol Wagner Angleton. I'm a librarian with the Augusta Richmond County Public Library System. And hello, I'm Georgina Lewis, your favorite librarian in training. Today we are talking about Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman's take on the apocalypse and the end of the world and a friendship between an angel and a fallen angel. <laughs> Let's talk first about the unlikely friendship between Crowley and Aziraphale. A, a okay, I got it right, Aziraphale. <laughs> Aziraphale is the good angel, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Crowley is the what we know as the snake in the Garden of Eden. But we really can't tell which one is good and which one is not. Ladies? I don't know. Well, they definitely have the moments where they overlap. They, they've obviously mm. become good friends, whether they want to admit it or not. And... I think the fact that they're both aligned against the apocalypse coming to, to fruition is probably a good indication that they've changed from their original purposes of good and evil to a screaming neutral. Still screaming neutral. <laughs> Very chaotic neutral, I would say, if I had to give it an alignment. Um, because Aziraphale, you know, he was supposed to be protecting the garden. He hands over his sword to the humans. I'm just like, what are you doing, man? He's just like, and it's great because throughout the series, they're like, so that sword. And he's just like, you know, I don't, I don't know. You know, like, I'm sure it's around here somewhere. But I love their friendship, actually. That was like one of my favorite parts, like, just them sitting up in the park and stuff, just talking about like, we can't let this happen. I kind of like it here. Like, <laughs> there are some, they have some fantastic conversations because as blasphemous as it, as it appears, when they're at the crucifixion, he's like, oh, so Crowley, you know him? He's like, well, yeah, he, you know, I showed him the world because, you know, he's a carpenter from Galilee. Where is he going to go? <laughs> you know? And and you don't want to laugh, but you're just kind of like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so there are oh, funny man. conversations between them on the the situation of, of, of man. And, and yeah. I don't think either one of them want to go back to where they came from. I mean, oh no, <laughs> heaven doesn't sound that appealing. And Crowley definitely doesn't want to go back to hell and hang out with the people down there. <laughs> Because they were, they were horrible looking. I, I know they're, you know, famine and pestilence and all of this stuff, but the one that Beelzebub sitting there with the flies going around her head, that was kind of like, you could just imagine how bad she smelled. <laughs> just kind of. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, I also think that they were kind of like, maybe because of their experiences, they were kind of like the misfits of each right. one. Like, Aziraphale doesn't seem like he fit into heaven at all. Like, just everybody in heaven was so buff and everything else. And you got him running around like, you know, I like to eat. Like, like, like you know, like, I want to read my little books. And I, you know, I'm collecting all kinds of stuff. And I'm just like, this, this, this child is done completely settled in. So, you know, being on earth, essentially. So, and I'm laughing. Because there's an interview with him on what's the British talk show? Uh, you, you know who I'm talking about. There's an yeah. interview with him, and he's talking, and he said one of the ladies, because uh, he was on there with the guy that plays Thor, and Thor was talking about wearing the fat suit, and one of the ladies asked him, "Well, did you? How was it wearing the fat suit when you were filming Good Omens?" And he's like, "What fat suit?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh, oh, that, that made me laugh because you see him in these scenes, and you know they're doing this room full of dancing with the men dancing and doing like the Charleston kick, and he's in the middle of it. And he's just like, yeah, <laughs> and he's just enjoying his life on, on Earth. But let's he talk is. a little bit about the style of writing of the book. 
Yeah, I think the I think I'm about to blaspheme for every Terry Pratchett lover and Neil Gaiman lover, but I don't think they meshed very well. Um, Neil Gaiman's supposed to be a little bit darker, and Terry Pratchett is a little bit more optimistic, and they never really they never really hit a tone one way or the other. Okay. So it it just mm -hmm. it didn't it didn't work for me at all in terms of the writing. Um, and again, I think there were maybe a couple too many storylines going on because not only did you get story the three major storylines, the angels, the chil the children, and then anathema in the background, you know, the the witch and the witch hunter. You had a lot of other stuff from a lot of side characters like the um, the the captain of the witch hunters and the and the medium who was who was very funny actually I liked her quite a bit yeah, yeah. but it was it it detra it detracted from where you were trying to go I think added just added pages that you didn't need there there's a lot going on in in this story um, I, I'm with you Carol um, and we get to the end and we ask the question of whether or not the story or whether the book was the book better. I think we're probably all going to be in agreement on this one book between the series that's on uh, Amazon Prime and the book, the way that they visualize the storyline. Let's talk a little bit about that, how they visualize the storyline. I think they did a good job kind of capturing what the authors were trying to depict in the, in the book. Um, mm. I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I think they did an excellent job, or the actress did an excellent job of being Crawley and um, Aziraphale. Uh, and I have to admit that special effect with Crawley's eyes was, was really effective. It was like, ooh. And, um, but the, the story, I think, was a little... Um, was pacing for a movie was very slow. It was just so much better to see it yeah. kind of going because it was kind of like, okay, now we are with the children. We are with uh, Crowley. We are with, you know, all these different characters, you know, and we get a chance to literally see them, be with them, hear them have their dialogue. And then it kind of helps. Oh, it's still chaotic, but it kind of helps make sense of, all these thoughts and things that are running and I do feel like watching this watching the series made me feel like okay the end goal is essentially to stop you know little Adam Young from like setting off Armageddon you know for the for the sake of Crowley and Aziraphale enjoying their time there <laughs> you know so yeah. it kind of helped me focus it a bit more I think that's probably what I'm doing. I don't know. The, the cover of the book says the nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter, which, you know, and mm. I think a lot of her prophecies were downplayed in the series um, outside of the great granddaughter having being very, very rich for buying the Apple stocks. Um, mm. Like uh, on page 217, 3477, let the wheel of fate turn, let hearts enjoin. There are other fires than mine. When the wind bloweth, the blossoms reach out one to another. For the calm cometh when red and white and black and pale approach to peas in our profession. And it's written in old English, like Beowulf old English. <laughs> so you're looking at it and going, what, 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 what is this? How do you even try to interpret that? You know? Yeah, that was one of the harder ones, no doubt. Yeah, and I'm looking at it and I'm like, mm. okay, I see it, but I don't understand. Um, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of that. Uh, there's a lot of things that you're looking at and you're reading and you're, it's not kind of equating like a zero fail and his pension for gluttony because throughout the whole series, he's always eating. He's yes. always eating. And even Gabriel comments on, I'm not going to defile my body eating that. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to defile my people eating that. What, what are you putting that in your mouth for? <laughs> you know, but he's always yes. eating. I was going to say, like, there's a part in the series where, like, you know, Gabriel, you know, he's just running, you know, being all fit and all this <laughs> other stuff. And Aziraphale is like, wait, <laughs> stop. 
stop. Let me talk to you. Just stop. <laughs> like and he just like he was looking at him like find your sword and lose the good. Get ready for this. <laughs> Like, that's the whole thing. I'm just like, poor baby. Like, he is not, first of all, stop Armageddon because this poor baby is not ready for this fight. He just thinking to himself, I'm going to be one of the first ones to go down. I don't need to do this. So, yes, he loved to eat. He always ate at really nice places, too. Yeah, he's definitely a food snob. He <laughs> is. And then he had all of those wonderful, wonderful bottles of wine that he has had it's the fall of the Roman Empire. <laughs> and they're sitting there just, oh, I'm drunk and you know, I don't want that anymore. And then the bottles filled back up. I thought that was kind of kind of cool. Yes. Uh, Abuse of power. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Crawley going to Crowley and his whole character. I see you smiling, Georgina. You can't help but like him because he's cool. Yeah. Like he was just like, yeah, I'm not gonna have that name no more. And Aziraphale's just like, you're a snake. Like, like, why are you tripping about your name? And just like, I don't like it. It's like, okay, where are you gonna change it to? You know, you already know that it's gonna be something so mundane. But I guess in a way, I still was waiting to hear if he had any other choices other wow. than Crowley. Yeah, yeah. He, he goes straight. He's like Crowley. I'm just like, okay, change your mind. Got you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> There are certain parts of it that's absolutely hilarious. And especially when you think back on it and you think of the clever play on words and some of the things that they're discussing that happen in history. But then you think about Aziraphale's fascination with sushi. <laughs> you just, I just think it's divine. It's just so scrumptious. <laughs> you know? And he's sitting there with his tea and crumpets and he's just looking forward to tea time. And it's just, it's, it's, it's fun to watch, even though you mm. know, you know, this is kind of a, mm, but Gaiman loves to play with the idea of the end of the world and all of the gods coming together and all the demons coming together because he does it well in American gods. Um, but or I have you, if, go ahead. If, if you were going to read Pratchett for, for end of the world, he, he does that in his death character only his death character is a lot more friendly okay. throughout his books. But mm. um, friendly is not quite the right word. He's more sympathetic to the people he's killing off, I think. Okay. Um, but if I were, if I were going to recommend reading Pratchett, probably the equal to American gods would be Pratchett's small gods. Because okay. there he, he looks at the whole thing about, well, what happens to a god when people start believing in them? I mean, okay. stop believing in them. Okay. And oh, so, okay. yeah. That so that that would probably be the the what's the word I want not mirror okay because I was looking at the light word. okay <laughs> I was thinking about the light fantastic um there's an NF wizard in the light fantastic oh rinse wind yeah yeah oh okay so you're a big fan all right I'm big yeah I'm a big <clears throat> fan <clears throat> okay so now I have to ask the question what's the book better Georgina is choking. I think that that's going to answer that question. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. And why not? And why not? Um, just for a lot of the reasons we were explaining before. Now, I'm someone who likes multiple like storylines and different things like that going on. And maybe it's just because the two of them had never really like work together like that before but it just felt really hard to follow for me like just the multiple storylines and I'm someone who wants to get all of it and I feel like I wasn't getting everything as I was listening to it okay. so you know it just made me disappointed because I'm just like I want to get all the storylines and see all the moving parts but I just can't just the way it's written so for me it's definitely gonna have to be the series being better okay Carol? I, I'm even. I, I think if you read the book, you didn't miss anything in the movie. And if you if you um, watch the movie, you didn't really miss anything that was worth crying about in the book. So either one's, a, either one's an experience. I'm not willing to say it's a good experience on either one. This is, this is not my, my favorite looking at it from a Pratchett standpoint. But it, it, it does have its moments. I think 
I think it's going to have trouble the farther we get away from it because some of the some of the humor is very very topical like that crack they make about the Jeffrey Archer books well at some point nobody's going to know who Jeffrey Archer was in fact I think you could say over on this side of the pond we barely know who Jeffrey Archer was so we don't know we're supposed to laugh there okay Mm -hmm. and I guess that makes me the tiebreaker I would have to say that the series was better because when you're trying to decipher some of the old English, the multiple storylines, it it helps to see it visually versus trying to Mm -hmm. compartmentalize all of those things in your head as you're reading. So far as we're concerned, I think the series was better. Georgina thought the series was better. Yeah, that and was Carol good. stayed kind of neutral. Okay. Mm. So that's how we feel about Good Omens. You can find it in the library under Fiction. I think it's under Fiction Pratchett. And you can also find it on Amazon Prime. And next month, we will be back with The Outsiders by Stephen King. So for TNTV, What's the Book Better? I am your host, USA Today best-selling author, Olivia Gaines, along with my buddies from the Augusta Richmond County Public Library. Say goodbye, ladies. Bye. (laughs) Bye. And I'm Georgina Lewis, your favorite librarian and trainer, and we'll see y'all next time.